March 21st, 1941. Life in the Mediterranean has been dull to say the least. Our crew as a whole feels that our time would be better spent up north, where we felt we were actually making a difference for the war effort. Here it feels as though we are glorified escorts, as most of our time is spent making sure our supply ships reach targets to the north of Africa from Italy. I put in a request for my crew and I to be transferred back to France, but I'm still waiting for a response from command. Seeing as how it's been nearly a month since that request has been put in with no response, I am willing to bet that it mysteriously got lost while in transit. Nonetheless, we must continue to make the best of our situation and be the leading example to the newer U-boat crews that are joining us in the Mediterranean. Hey everybody, how you guys doing? My name is Crazy Jester and welcome to another episode of U-Boat and my goodness, as I was uh, turning this game on to get ready to uh, record this episode, to my surprise, there was yet again another developer update for updates coming to U-Boat later this year or early next year. And I gotta say, they are exciting. So as we are playing this again, our goal today is to go towards the uh, Port of Gibraltar and see if we can't uh, knock out any key targets and or military-esque style ships instead of the cargo ships. We're going after military ships. Knock those out so it'll allow our boys to come from the north and through the uh, strait here without having to encounter too much. So that's the goal, and that's where we're going to head. Of course, if we come across anything along the way, we will be uh, dealing with that accordingly. But as in the last episode, my plan is to give you guys a little bit of updates. Not as many updates because it's just a it was one developer log that came through, but they are exciting updates that are coming that they are adding and things that many players. Especially many of the viewers that have been watching my episodes, they've wanted me to use the TDC mod. And uh, surprise, surprise, they are going to be adding that TDC mod to the game. Yes, you heard that correct. They are finally adding the TDC to the game. It's just going to be a part, no longer a mod, but a part of the game, a part of the U-boat. And uh, so many people are excited for this. And to me as well, to be honest. Now, I understand there might be a few out there that are sitting there going, well, what the hell is TDC? I, I have never heard of this. And TDC, it stands for Torpedo Data Calculator. And essentially what it did, it was an electromechanical uh, device that the Germans used in U-boats, and it calculated a whole bunch for the uh, torpedo. I mean, the, the, the gyro, the torpedo, uh, so many things. Now, something to note is it is going to be completely optional to use. You, you can either choose to use it, or you can choose not to, which is pretty awesome. The benefit of it being optional is the developers are saying that they can basically go absolute realism mode on this thing. All right, well, really quick, we are nearing the Port of Gibraltar. It's going to be 0430 hours right now. Let's go ahead and drop down to periscope depth while we get closer, if we can. And we will uh, get somebody on the listening room. So as we near, these are more than likely going to be military craft, definitely, in little groups of two to four. These will be destroyers that are just kind of putting around the port of Gibraltar. They are not going to be the big cargo ships that we want. But see, you can see how just dense it is with uh, military craft here. It's absolutely ridiculous. This might be one for us right here, though. Hello. This is a single ship cruising out to sea. This is going to be... This is definitely for us. Let's go ahead and try and get into a good view here. We're going to be running up on probably 0600 hours by the time we actually run into it, which is okay by me. That means the sun will be coming up and we'll have a better view because as it stands right now, it's pretty much pitch black outside and we don't want that. And here we go. It was indeed a lone cargo ship coming through. Let's go ahead and start setting up if we can, please. Go a little faster, make sure our U-boat is straightened out and let's go ahead and stop while we can right now and start plotting out everything that we need. It's gonna be on a rough course like that, which means we are coming in at almost a 90 degree angle. We might be at like 89 which is fine, but we are 1.7 kilometers away. I would like to close that gap, preferably again, usually to about one kilometer. Let's go ahead and get into that position and start gathering the rest of the information we need to get a solid torpedo strike, shall we? So what else are they gonna be adding 
in the new updates. The other thing that they're going to be adding is going to be uh, depth uncertainty. So, usually when you're traveling along, you can find the depth of certain areas. So, as you can see on the top right, uh, just under the menu bar, you can see those numbers that are moving along as I move the cursor. And that's our depth. So, where our cursor is right now, right over CG966, the depth is... 1095 meters obviously as we get closer to shore as you can see it gets less and less they're gonna take that away you're gonna have to actually use the instruments inside the u-boat to actually determine depth which is good no more am I gonna be able to sit here and say well I need to get out of the range of depth charges or drop down to a certain depth and I can just hold my cursor up over a certain area and say okay well it's 800 meters deep right here I'm gonna drop down you know, to 400 feet because I know I'm well within the range and I'll be fine. Now I'm going to have to go inside, use my instruments and say, well, how much distance do I have between the U-boat and the, the, the seabed? Ping it and then find out, okay, well, now you've got 800 meters below you. It's just going to make it that much more difficult for the captain and the realism aspect of things. But a good thing to know is that for those of you that like to dock the U-boat manually, they are going to keep the depths for ports because it was not uncommon for U-boat captains to get detailed maps regarding the depths around the ports and what, what to look for. So they're going to keep that portion of it at least the information that the captain gets. You get to know the depths in and around friendly ports. Alright, well first things first, let's go ahead and identify this guy, shall we? And there we go, it looks like a Empire Explorer. Let's go ahead and recognize. Secondly, let's go ahead and get a velocity if we can. And already, my goodness, start. He seems like he is going terribly slow. Set seven knots. Boy, that sure didn't feel like seven knots. But I'll believe you. Course of about 91 degrees. There we go. And a distance, you know, we already kind of looked at it. So we'll say... 1,000. What we can do, it actually is a little closer. Let's go ahead and get a proper distance here. No, we're looking at one kilometer. Perfect. Go ahead and start a torpedo if we can, please. We'll drop the depth low. 2.5 meters. Let's get it fast. And uh, compressed air levels too. No. Oh my gosh, no way. Can we get the diesel compressors going, please? There we go. That changed a little bit. Now let's go ahead and get an updated distance if we can. We are looking at right about 850 meters. Let's hurry up and change that if we can, please. 850 and fire. Los! And there we go, serious damage right over the, uh, just in front of the captain's quarters there. That is a beautiful hit, and you can already see the uh, rear of the ship starting to lift a little bit out of the water. Meanwhile, you got this guy that doesn't seem to be too worried that his ship got torpedoed. That's totally okay. Just walk, mosey about towards it and see what's going on. Incoming from the Violet. Ah, that's not going to be good, though. She'll be radioing to the uh, destroyers out there that she was just struck by a torpedo. Um, of course, it's uh, encrypted with a foreign cipher, and we can't decode it. That's fine. That's okay. That is fine, and clearly the uh, ship has just gone down, which is perfect for us. Let's go ahead and get those values off to uh, command, and we will move in. Go ahead and surface the boat if we can, and go pick up anyone that's remaining. Overall, not bad. A good hit. Good hit. Go ahead and look at the interactions nearby, and there we go. Okay, Philip Moore and Herbert Cameron, go ahead and confirm. Another thing that they're going to be adding in the update when it comes out is an echo sounder, and that is due to the fact that they are getting rid of depths, as we just previously spoke about. So the echo sounder is going to be the tone that they hit, and it sends off that loud screeching beep below the keel, and that's how you're going to be able to find the depth of the uh, seabed. So... They are going to be adding an echo sounder along with crew logs. Now, I don't know 
there's not too much explanation as to what the crew logs are going to entail. Um, I don't know if it's going to be super in-depth or if you're just going to be able to have just a, a little bit more of an idea for those of you that have your crew settings set to difficulty of hard or higher. If it's just going to allow you to see exactly what they're doing. So if you need somebody to be ready and start warming up the torpedoes and then all of a sudden he feels like he wants a you know a ham sandwich and then buggers off that's okay you're gonna know that and then you can plan accordingly rather than not knowing anything and they just maybe you're not paying attention to something and you're dicking around with something up uh, up to the top here and then all of a sudden boom this guy goes to bed or to go get some food or to play cards and because you're messing around with stuff up here you don't notice that change down here now there will actually be a log on the bottom right or the bottom left. Somewhere on the screen, there's going to be a log, and it's going to notify you, hey, so-and-so has now started doing this. So here we go. We've got a pretty good chance at a target right now, right in front of us, the uh, Destroyer Fortune. And we are, t we are definitely close. We're definitely playing with death right here. Uh, going to be knocking at his doorstep, but I think this is going to be worth it. Gotta risk it for the biscuit, as they say, right? All right, let's go ahead and get this destroyer identified. And it's looking like a, a tribal class. Let's go ahead and get the velocity if we can, please. Not going too fast, which is good. Start. It is on a bit of a turn, though. So we'll have to see if it's continuing that turn or if it's going to start straightening out. It looks like they're almost trying to go back to the port. But the plan of action is we are going to launch a torpedo its way and then immediately dive and start getting out of here. We're going to need to stop, set, eight knots. I can deal with eight knots. Going to the bow right, okay. Not exactly a 90, more like a 78 degree. And a distance as it stands right now of 1.3 kilometers, okay. Go ahead and get one loaded here. 44 knots. We want to go very fast. Recheck that distance really quick. 1.4 is what we're looking at now. Okay. 1400 and fire. Force is set. Distance is set. Torpedo away, torpedo away. Go ahead and get rid of all this, please. It is moving very fast, and let's start getting out of here. Electric motor, forward one, start turning in, please. We will even drop depth to, what's our meters? We have 500 meters below us. Let's go ahead and drop to 70. We need to get the hell out of Dodge. And I don't know, this is looking pretty close. It might actually just go above because it looks like it's turning back. It did, it went right right in front of it. Now! Damn it. Oh shit, this isn't good. Go, as we were trying to leave the port, we needed air. Get on the deck gun, we have been spotted. It's going to be... Too hard to try and go dive under. We need to get on the deck gun immediately. Come on. Coming right for us. Start flanking him with shots here. Got our number dialed in almost, it looks like. Change course. Get some good solid hits here. It looks like we're planking them. There we go. Yeah, we're getting hits. You're getting hits. I haven't seen any more guns heading our way. Did we kill the gunner? Hell yes. Keep going, keep going. 
Change over to AP. We might have knocked out that first gun. Which is a benefit for us. We want to go straight at it then. He's not shooting us anymore. Keep going, keep going. Yes! Get wrecked! We did knock out his first gun. It's the side guns that are trying to shoot us right now. Take him out. Enough HP or AP. Let's get some HE on board. Fuel this fire. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. Fuel that fire. His nose is going way under. Yes! Hell yes! Great freaking work, gentlemen! Great friggin' work! Hell yes, that is awesome. One nine five sun. Get, isn't that just unreal? We we tried with torpedoes to knock them out. And we were just getting unlucky. But I honestly believe, I, I legitimately believe that one of our rounds knocked out the front cannon of that destroyer because it wasn't shooting anymore. Start plotting a course back over into the area that we're supposed to be marking. So we have to travel still twenty five hundred kilometers inside, but we've done a pretty good deal of damage to ships inside. We've definitely reached the cap that we need of 10,000 uh, registered tonnage. Not bad overall, but while we're doing the traveling, what else is being added in the update just so we can continue that update? They are going to be increasing and improving diesel engines, which is good to know. So basically, uh, I haven't read too much into it, but what little I have read is that if you're diesel engines are running cold, it's going to emit a darker or thicker smoke that will be seen by the enemy at uh, greater distances. And I believe there was something in there they were talking about where more fuel would be consumed, um, but I don't recall what exactly it would be that would cause the fuel to be consumed at a higher rate. Nonetheless, read about that in the update because they have a little bit of an explanation, but they'll come out more. And then, uh, one last thing they are adding, at least that's been mentioned into this uh, update, this isn't the last last thing that they're adding, period, before the release, but the last thing that was mentioned in the update is that they are going to be improving the first person uh, experience. So if you want to play this game completely first person, that is going to uh, be a thing. What exactly are they going to be changing or improving? I don't know. However, they are saying that the first person experience is going to be a lot much uh, smoother and uh, it, overall it's going to be a better experience. So that's pretty exciting for anyone that wants to go ahead and do the U-boat in first person specifically. I actually might try that when they release that and just do specifically um, first person. That could be fun. Uh, but anyways, I think what we'll do is we'll end the episode there. I hope you guys have enjoyed the updates and likewise have enjoyed the episode. If you guys have, please comment down below. Let me know what you guys think and what your hopes are that they're going to add for updates in U-boat when it's uh, in another major release. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please give it again. Like I said, a thumbs up. It really helps me. It helps the channel out. Likewise, if you enjoy this and want to see more on updates for U-Boat, more on this series, and more video games coming out, please consider subscribing. But I'm going to get back at it, read about these new updates, and uh, until the next video, I hope you guys all have an incredible day. Take it easy, okay?